what he's going to take us through. All right, so this is the melting pot. This is it. All right, so take us through. Well, it's a beautifully ergonomically designed apparatus with handles that okay. you can hold. Put, you can put your fingers so that through. Get hot. That does not okay. get hot. Right. Um, it comes with a lid, which is packed in the box, so you want to be really careful you don't throw that part of the box yeah. away. It comes with a temperature control, which is variable, like you would find on an iron. Oh, right, so you just slide it, okay. Right, and the hottest setting would be your ultra-thick embossing enamel or UD setting, and okay. a little bit lower would be for wax and other low-temp melting products, like glue and so on, candles, soap. Okay. Okay. Now, I noticed when you were turning it on and off that, like, lights were... Right, so the green light will come on okay. to let you know it's powered up, All right. but the red light will come on much the same as an iron does. It cycles. So when it reaches the desired temperature, the red light will turn off. Uh, if it goes okay. below that temperature, the red light, it needs to recycle again, and when the red light comes on, you know you've hit that temperature. So, like you said, just like the Just iron. like an iron. Okay. Exactly. All right. Now, the pan that you're looking at here mm -hmm. is built into the pot. Okay. This does not come out. The heating element is housed underneath the melting pot. Okay. So of course once this is on and heated you never want to put your hot. fingers in right. it. Right. It gets yeah. very very hot. Now is it a nonstick coating that's in there? So or? this is a Teflon coating. Okay cool. This is a wonderful Teflon coating, and what I like to do before I use it to heat UD is right. to preheat it by turning it all the way up and I cover it and that doesn't hurt it in any way and I let it preheat for about five minutes okay. and then when I put my powder in it begins to melt very quickly alright so I do have a question though yes because I see that that's built in but then I also see this that we right saw. so, tell us so a this bit about that. is an extra this is a project pan okay. and this is designed to fit exactly into oh, cool. the built-in pan and of course you always want to place it in a pan that's in a in a pot that's clean okay. nothing in the surface right. this project pan was designed to use especially with low melt projects okay. uh, products for example beeswax perfect right. and then when you're done you simply turn off the pot you wait for it to cool down Got it. and then you will remove the project pan okay. and the wax may still be in it and you oh. put it aside, okay. and when you're ready to use it again, you place it back into your melting pot, turn That's it on, cool. and everything will reconstitute. That's cool. No so, wastage. So the melting pot, we've got, obviously, UD, embossing UD. powder. Uh, you talked about beeswax, but um, you can bake things in this as well? Absolutely. You can use this as an oven, per se. Okay. Um, if you put your project pan in, uh -huh. it's great for baking polymer clay. Oh, cool. So when you're yeah. crafting and you're out on a trip somewhere with your friends, you right. have the ability to do embossing powders, waxes, polymer clays, anything that you like you can do in this melting pot. All in the melting pot. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. All right. Well, then let's take a look at all the things that we can put into the into melting the pot. Melting pot. Right. I was really fascinated by what ultra thick is because I always thought it was something just totally different but it's embossing powder, right? It's, it's just a very thick granule of embossing powder okay. and uh, you need less of it when you put it in your melting pot than you would of regular embossing powder but you can melt regular embossing powder in here as well okay. and it's really important to mention that you always want to work on the nonstick craft sheet and you right. always want to use the correct tools Definitely. one of which would be the cool tools okay. spatula yep. it's a nonstick it is a heat resistant spatula so this is the only tool you ever want to stir anything with in your melting pot all right now did you paint your nails to match the cool tool always okay I cool tool nails see, i see that yeah absolutely it's all about marketing i love it absolutely all right. so i can see that you poured in the ultra thick and it's melting now it's melting clear because you poured in clear correct all right. but clear has a little bit of a tendency the way sugar would when you cook it for a really long time all right. it tends to turn a little bit of that amber color oh right well of course yeah, and and actually clear. it's kind of a beautiful shade because it's got that very antique very vintage oh, look to it so that. sometimes i let it overcook yeah. purposely oh that's good all right so as it's melting, I mean, so you just kind of let it do its thing. Can we mix it up right now? I don't like to mix it now okay. because um, it actually contains a lot of air in there as it's melting. In fact, I generally just put the lid on and ignore it. 
out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. Right. But just in the interest of a video so that people can see what's going on, the most stirring, per se, that I do is to tip it a little bit, um, bringing the powder sort of into the center, which is the hottest part of okay. the pot. But all I right, don't yeah. stir because all it does is conjure up a lot of witch's brew. You get a lot of bubbles, and you really don't want air bubbles. Right. However, if right. you get a lot of air bubbles yeah. and that bothers you, right. you take your Ranger heat tool, and you just can wand over the surface very gently, and it will burst all your bubbles for you. So if you them. want to have a color that you can see through, okay. which would be sort of like a stained glass color, right. then we have a set of six beautiful dyes, water-based dyes, called To Dye For. Right. And they come in six colors, all of which, primaries and hots, are intermixable. So for example, if you mix the blue and the yellow, you will get a shade of green different okay. than the green it comes in. Okay. And my favorite mixture is to take one drop of blue and two or three drops of the magenta to make the melt dark purple oh, color. A yeah. All right. Well, cool. Well, take us through and kind of show us how that works if you don't mind. Okay. So this is not a dye that is um, very loose. It's got a little bit of a thickness to it. Right. And now that all my powder has melted, right. now I'm allowed to stir. Okay. So you're going to stir very gently oh. to integrate the color. Kind You'll notice up. you get a little bit of air bubbles, which is okay because, okay. again, you can take your heat tool and you can just wand over the surface. Right. Some people like to leave it in this kind of um, marbly yeah, color. Cool. And I'm one that likes to completely mix it. Kind of mix it up. Now, right. Now, the to die for is, I mean, you talked about putting it in the melting pot. Is this just a re inker or is this just a. No, no, no. Okay. This is not a re inker. Right. This is definitely a solvent dye. This, the only, this is a heat safe dye. Okay. So, this is the only uh, dye that you should ever put in the melting pot. Never put any alcohol inks oh, right, in there. Not. Nothing was, like that. Okay. Just to die for. All right. Well, I know you're going to take us through and show us some of the finished pieces, but. Let's kind of wrap this up and say, all right, so if you're done, if I'm finished mm -hmm. using the melting pot, do I just put it away like this or? Your options are you may turn it off okay. and leave this in here exactly the way it is. All if right. you know tomorrow you want to come back and use this again, mm -hmm. you simply turn it on, it reconstitutes. So okay. again, no wastage. Right. Your other option would be to do something with it so that you've used it up mm -hmm. or you can take your cool tool spatula and you can pour it out on your craft sheet. All right. And then clean out your pot with a wad of paper towels while the pot is still on. Oh, that's, that's a much easier way to do that. And then you can start fresh because if you're going to put a color in here right. and then use it for clear, you right. want to make sure that your pot is absolutely clean. Cool. And then I know, of course, from using this, once this cools, if you wanted to, you just... We can throw it back in and remelt it again. Outstanding. Cool. So really, there's never any wastage with UD. That's great. Well, thanks for the walkthrough, because I think that you know a lot of people have questions on this whole product, and sometimes they're a little intimidated, but I think just going through the reps with you, you really answered a lot Nothing of questions. Nothing to be intimidated about. Great tool. Everyone should have one. Thanks, Or Suze. two. Love it. <laughs> You'll notice there are 15 colors, beautiful colors, of ultra-thick embossing enamel. And if we add in clear, that makes 16. And we have wonderful metallics, bronze, platinum, gold. We have black and white. We even have a wonderful, interesting color called interference blue. We have pearl, which is a personal favorite of mine. Red poppy, tiger lily, sunflower, green zinnia, the new spruce green, blue iris, fuchsia, and violet. That violet is so exquisite.